Now, our final guest has fitted a heck of a lot into his 63 years. He's been a salesman, a fish and chip shop owner, and even an engineer in Nova Scotia. However, it was his career move into acting that got all of our attention. Life hasn't all been plain sailing, as his new autobiography, Mummy's Boy, shows. But he's certainly a household name, thanks to Rose. Roles like Matt Taylor in Triangle, Evil Archie in EastEnders, and the adorable Mick in Gavin and Stacey. Oh, please welcome Larry Lamb! <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. Where, where, will, he ever, will he ever live that down? Eh? Rub, rubbing that on my chest. God, what a character that one. Eh? What a character. Rob Brydon, what a mind. How what a many mind. takes? How many takes? We did that in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we said goodbye to Gavin and Stacey last year, but do you really think it was goodbye? Was it, was no, it more no, of a no, see no, soon? No, 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 no. no. Au, au revoir. So that's it. It'll be on again. Don't worry. It will. Oh, They're never going to. No, the BBC are never going to bury that. You must be burying another one. I, I know, know you are. Yeah, I can yeah. feel it. Yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah, staring yeah, into your you know, eyes. I've, I want you to give me the answer. Yeah, I've stopped. You know, no, the thing is that nobody really knows. That's the thing. Is the problem getting everybody together again because everybody's had an amazing sort of fillip to their lives and you've all yeah. got careers now. You could I mean, do nobody one, knew who I was before <laughs> Gavin and Stacey. Right? All triangles, no, we know. Yeah, but then they forgot. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it's, like, it's like everybody's got a career. Getting them all together to do it is going to be the problem. Yeah, but yeah. I, they, they're going to do it. The BBC won't kill that. They're watching yeah, the reruns. You might have to have an affair with Rob, you know, after well, that. Well, you never that know. That could be your I mean, character you know, development. Yeah, well. It might be. We might go fishing together, you know. <laughs> Broke back mountain. Eh? Broke back Broke mountain. mountain. Yeah, it'd be lovely, eh? Nice little scene with him. <laughs> Just up right up my alley, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind my skinny Take legs. Some of that Make spray me with habit. you. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, as well as saying goodbye to Mick last year, you also said goodbye to Archie. It was, it was a big year for you, signing off on some great characters. And yeah. since then, you've immersed yourself uh, in your writing and you've put this out. This is your autobiography, Mummy's Boy. Yeah. Yeah, God, I tell How you. was that? Yeah, it was really interesting, and, and, and in the end, you know, just because you sort of suddenly get on the scene and you suddenly become a celebrity, the stories that you've been telling your friends and your family for years and years suddenly have a sort of a currency. How did you yeah. do it? How, did you sit down and did you dictate it or did you no, write it? I tell you what, I tell you what I did. I go, when I first got famous, every, all the publishers seemed to be top. Well, they all want to. They heard I had a story, so they were all after. So there were five publishers all telling me they wanted to do, me to do a story. So I thought, right, well, one of them was going to come through. So I sat down and wrote. I wrote 120,000 words. Wow. And I write longhand, wow. and I was up to 1990. So I thought I could write two books. <laughs> and all the all the publishers disappeared. There were none of them left. So I literally took the lot. And that's 100, 120,000 words is a lot of words. Boom, put them in yeah. the bottom of the cover. Forgot all about it. About three months later, my agent called up and she said, we've had some people on the phone, they've heard about your story, they want to have a look. So we sent them two, two chapters, I went in and talked to them, they said, look, you've got to bring this to life. This is, it's a fascinating story, but it's like looking into somebody's journal. It's got to be interesting, it's got to come off the page. So they directed me, they made me understand the way to do it. So I went away, I worked on this for a fortnight, sent it in, and they phoned me back the following day and said, that's it, we've commissioned it, we're going to do it. So what I did was I, I allowed myself to be directed by people who know how to sell autobiographies to write something that is not going to be solid and stultified and, and basically dull. Oh, it's like dull. talking to you, mm. that's the, the tone of it, it's it, so it, great. It, it, like, it's just like sitting in a room having a chat That's with what you. they wanted. So in the end, what there is in there, there's 54, I think 54 or 55, stories that tell the story of my life and they Have overlap been... they underlap they do they do they sort of go along with each other they're and... basically chronologically Have organized you been totally honest yeah i've been as i've been totally honest yes i have been totally honest but you know there are certain things that lawyers get involved with that they won't let you put in there so there are things in there and to be perfectly honest what's happened is there are big chunks of my life that are not in that book because i wrote too much and what, they know what they want. They know what the beginning, they know, they know what they want for the end. But there must have been some moments where, because it's quite heart-wrenching at times, where it must have been difficult to actually reveal that stuff about yourself and your family. And... Yeah, well, the, the, the thing is, that the stuff about me growing up and what I experienced as a boy, as far as I'm concerned, if in any way by making those public, you can help other people in the same position. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. it's an open book, it's not a closed book. It's when it starts to touch on other people's life. My life, as far as I'm concerned, was, was, it was given to me 
to live and I've lived it, OK? And now, as far as I'm concerned, to share it with other people, you know, some people think, oh, what's he, what's he blabbing about his private life for? I'm blabbing about my life. Over the mm. bits I really like, my favourite bit in the book, is you do a movie with Bob Dylan yeah. and you're really impressed you're working with Bob yeah, Dylan yeah. and what happened? Yeah, what happened? You didn't have dinner with him. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing after work, Larry? I'm going home for dinner. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> so I went home for dinner. And, and, and didn't even think for one second, you know, he might be saying, would you fancy going out for a beer or something? Wow. You could have been songwriting I with I could him. have been songwriting. Who was the other could famous person? There was somebody else that you missed. Oh, there were, so, like, so Muhammad many Ali. missed opportunities. Well, Muhammad Ali was this, I met, you know, when I was just a sort of a boy living in America and, you know, in my 20s and I saw this guy standing at a bar and I thought, that's Cassius Clay. And I walked across to him. He was standing with back to me with these other two big guys. And he turned Sorry, around Larry. and started spurring up. They're Sparring about to up. take us off air. It's <laughs> been a pleasure. Larry Lamb, hey. everyone. <laughs>